Hello, Matu Jimmy, and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime Time. Now, headlines. All is set for the Lok Sabha election in Nagaland, where 13,17,536 voters in the state will go to exercise their franchise on April 19 to elect the person who will represent the people of the state at the centre. Former UK Prime Minister David Cameron addressed the Manipur issue during a debate in UK's House of Lords after Lord Indrajit Singh raised questions regarding the religious freedom in India and the current situation in Manipur. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Wednesday staunchly asserted that his country would be the one to decide whether and how to respond to Iran's major air assault earlier this week. Head of the polling for the first phase of Lok Sabha election security has been tightened in the Naxal affected areas of Gatiroli in Maharashtra. All campaigning has been stopped last evening ahead of the Lok Sabha election in Nagaland and now voters in the state will go to exercise their franchise tomorrow to elect the person who will represent the people of the state at the center. Three candidates including UDA's consensus candidate Dr. Chumben Muri, Congress backed by RPP candidate as Supangmaran Jamir and independent candidate Haitang Tungoy Lotha are in the fray vying for the loaned Lok Sabha seat. There are 13,17,536 eligible electors where 6,56,729 are male voters and 60,807 female. The ENPO has, however, resolved not to participate in the electoral process due to the FNT issue. Meanwhile, 14,052 polling personnel are ready for duty at 2,342 polling stations across the state. The stage is set for the first phase of the 18th Lok Sabha polls in Manipur where more than 15 lakh voters will decide the fate of six candidates standing in eight constituencies. Tight security arrangements are in place in all the valley districts including Churachanpur and Kangkokpi where 162 co companies of central paramilitary forces have been deployed apart from the state security forces including police personnel. Speaking to Hornbill TV, Ram Nanda Nong Me Kapa, Joint Chief Electoral Officer, Manipur said a total of 15,44,652 voters, including 7,41,849 males, 8,2,557 females, and 246 third genders will exercise their franchise in this election. Besides, the official further noted that there are 289 centenarians, 11,582 PWD, people with disabilities, and 13,638 people with 85 plus in the state. Interestingly, there are 12,398 first time voters and 38,388. 83 voters in the age between 20 to 29 years in this election, he added. Ramananda informed that his department has set up a total of 85 special polling stations in Imphal East, Imphal West, Tobal, Bishnupur, Kakting, Churachanpur and Kangkukpi districts for internally displaced people who are staying in various relief camps or relative houses or in rented accommodations. The department has also appointed designated AROs for every district for those IDPs, the official contented. There are 645 special polling stations which are exclusively managed by all women polling personnel. Uh, uh, the preparations for the, uh, the 18th uh, Lok Sabha elections for this phase number one has been completed. And today we have uh, completed the dispersal of the polling parties in respect of 2,107 uh, polling stations spread across uh, eight districts, Imphal East, Imphal West, Bisnupur, Thaubal, Kakching, Chandel, Churachanpur, and Kangpokpi. And in this uh, phase one, over 8,000 uh, polling parties will be performing their duties. And uh, a total of 162 companies of uh, Central Paramilitary Forces 
they have also been deployed. And uh, in addition to this, we have uh, uh, special polling stations which are set up particularly for the internally displaced people who are staying in the relief camp and people who are staying uh, with their relatives and where, uh, you know, they are, some of them are also staying with their friends' house or in the rented houses also. So they have also been uh, allowed to vote at the relief camps. So we have 85 uh, special polling stations set up in uh, Imphal East, Imphal West, Thobal, Bishnupur, Kakching, Churachanpur and Kangpopi. So these uh, IDPs, they will be voting in these special polling stations. And we have made special arrangement for that also. We have uh, appointed, designated AROs for every uh, district. So uh, this way we have uh, uh, arranged uh, specially for them. And uh, we have got 645 uh, polling stations, which will be exclusively managed by the women polling parties. So this is a very huge number. In the last assembly elections, we have over 600 uh, women managed polling, uh, uh, polling stations. This time we'll be having a total of uh, over 800 uh, polling stations, both in phase one and phase two. But in the phase one, we'll be having 645 polling stations, which will be exclusively managed by the women polling teams only. In addition to this, we have two polling stations in phase one, which will be exclusively managed by the persons with disabilities. So this is again a very uh, good news. And uh, uh, with respect to webcasting, we'll be having 1,256 polling stations where uh, webcasting will be done. And through webcasting, uh, we will be able to know uh, the polling, uh, you know, the procedure happening in the polling stations. If at all there is any problem inside the polling booth, we will be able to know and we will be able to resolve at that instant. So this will be very helpful for us. In addition to this, uh, as a special arrangement, uh, we have uh, deployed various IT applications. For example, eAtlas, it is an application where the polling teams, they can report if there is any EVM malfunction or if there is any unwanted incident happening inside the polling booth, they can immediately report through that particular application. And we at the control room and also the returning officers or the assistant returning officers at the district headquarters, they can immediately resolve all these problems. So this is a very helpful uh, application to be utilized by all the presiding officers. In addition to this, we will be utilizing a poll star application where the polling teams, they can report the voter turnout every two hours by just pressing a button. So they will be able to do that. So these are some of the arrangements uh, that, uh, uh, that are being arranged from our side. So uh, in this uh, phase one, we will be having uh, uh, 11,582 persons with disability voters. We will also have 13,638 85 plus voters, senior citizens. And uh, 100 plus voters, we have 289 people who have attained the age of 100 years. So this is a very big number. And uh, the 18 to 19 years age group, we have 12,398 people. Then 20 to 29 age group, we have 333,831 electors. So these are the categories of electors who will be voting in phase number one. So these are some of the arrangements being done from our uh, office through the district election officers. And in this phase one, we have six candidates in fray. So uh, the number of candidates, uh, male candidates is six and the number of female candidates, uh, this time we do not have any female candidates. So uh, in this phase one election, I would like to urge all the voters of Manipur uh, spread across in this uh, eight districts, Impal East, Impal West, Bishnupur, Thaubal, Churachanpur, Kakching, and Chandel to come out in large numbers and to exercise their franchise by coming at the regular, uh, you know, the, I mean, in time and to exercise their franchise without fail. So I would, uh, uh, last but not the least, I would request everyone to come and vote and to participate in this uh, the festival of democracy uh, this time uh, election commission of india uh, implemented different uh, innovative methods to increase the uh, poll uh, election uh, voting percentages okay. so what is the response of the people okay so uh, manipur has been um, one of the uh, you know uh, highest voter turnout states in the country so in the last uh, lok sabha election the voter turnout was 82% 
and in the assembly election it was more than 90 percent so uh, we are expecting the same thing to happen this time also from our side we have uh, you know uh, taken off a lot of sweep campaigns uh, very recently we had also uh, conducted the the signature campaign that i will vote for sure so it is not uh, tomorrow is not a it's not a holiday actually it is a voting day so everyone should come and vote so we expect that the people will come out in large numbers so manipur has has been uh, you know uh, there has been a history of uh, huge voter turnouts in the many previous elections held so far so tomorrow i'm very sure that people will come out in large numbers and they will vote for sure any special appeal for internally displaced people sir? Uh, I would like to appeal to all the uh, internally displaced people that uh, we have set up 85 uh, special polling stations uh, in the phase one. So I would like to appeal to all the uh, IDPs to come out in large numbers and to exercise uh, their franchise and uh, let us make uh, our voice heard. So please come out and vote. We'll take a short break. Keep watching. जल प्रतिरोधक सीमेंट से नहीं बना तो पड़ेगा रोना पानी घुसने से कंक्रीट कमजोर हो जाए स्टार वेदर शीट सीमेंट खराब मौसम में घर वेदर प्रूफ बनाए स्टार वेदर शीट जल प्रतिरोधक सीमेंट वेदर वेदर सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर मीट्स द गिफ्टेड कंटेंट राइटर मीट्स द कूल यू आई यू एक्स डिजाइनर मीट्स द टैलेंटेड फोटोग्राफर टू क्रिएट द बिग ड्रीम द वर्ल्ड कम्स टूगेदर एट शारदा यूनिवर्सिटी सो वेर आर यू To elect your tiger, vote wisely for your home. Your tiger is Black Tiger Cement. Darmat Tiger hai na? Darmat Tiger hai na? Black Tiger Cement. Action Society Mission Vatsiala Scheme is a plan to help achieve goals related to development and protection of children that are in line with the Sustainable Development Goals. It focuses on child rights, raising awareness and strengthening the juvenile justice care and protection system. It is funded by the central and state governments in a 60-40 ratio with 90-10 ratio for northeastern states and two Himalayan states. Dharma, tiger hai na? Black Tiger Cement. Darmat Tiger hai na? Black Tiger Cement. The Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission or the National Solar Mission was launched on 11th January 2010. JNSM is a major initiative of the Government of India with active participation from states to promote ecology. Darmat Tiger hai na? Black Tiger Cement. Welcome back. Moving further, former Prime Minister and Foreign Secretary of the UK David Cameron addressed the Manipur issue during a debate in UK's House of Lords after Lord Indrajit Singh raised questions regarding the religious freedom in India and the current situation in Manipur. David Cameron answering questions pertaining to freedom of religion in India and said it was important and the country have raised these issues within with the Indian government. and that should continue to be the case on manipur issue cameron said it was right to say that the religious aspects of some of the strife should not be downplayed sometimes it is the clashes communal tribal or ethnic but in many cases there is a religious part of it he also referred to a report by david campnelle which highlights the destruction of churches among both the hill tribes and valley dwellers in manipur almost exactly 10 years ago since the noble lord the minister um, stated in the other place that the 
mass killing of thousands of tens of thousands of Sikhs in 1984 was one of the greatest blots in the history of post-partition India. It's true that India has what it is what is called a secular constitution, but since then uh, we've had the riots in Ayodhya where tens of thousands of Muslims were killed, and then we had the Home Minister describing the Muslims as termites. Then there was a mosque, a uh, Hindu temple built on the raised mosque, and Christians have been persecuted again and again, and Sikhs are told that if they behave like Hindus, they are um, fine, otherwise they're termed separatists. Does the noble Lord the minister minister agree that um, India is a member of the Commonwealth and shouldn't freedom of belief be at the forefront of the Commonwealth Charter? I thank the noble Lord for his question. I'll never forget the visit I made to Amritsar. It's one of the most beautiful places I've, I've ever been, one of the most peaceful places, but of course... Uh, the memories of what happened there, it's very important that we acknowledge uh, what happened and how wrong it was. The point he makes about the importance of religious tolerance, of of, um, freedom of religious belief in India, uh, they are important points, and of course there there have been occasions um, where it's been something that we've raised with the Indian government, and I think that should continue to be uh, the case. The original question was about the situation in Manipur, where there has been a very good report written by uh, David Campanali, which I've, I've studied. And I think it's right to say that we shouldn't downplay the religious aspects of some of this strife. Yes, sometimes it is um, communal or, or tribal or ethnic, but there, in many cases, a clear religious part of it, and we should be clear about that. Despite mounting pressure from the West, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Wednesday staunchly asserted that his country would be the one to decide whether and how to respond to Iran's major air assault earlier this week. Thus, keeping aside the wider aspect of spiraling situation on the whole world, although the Israeli Prime Minister Israel has vowed to respond to Iran's unprecedented attack, he did not utter a single word on when or how Israeli allies have been urging Israel since the attack to hold back on any response that could spiral. These calls were repeated on Wednesday during visits by the British and German foreign ministers. The diplomatic pressures came as Iran's president warned that even the tiniest invasion of its territory would bring a massive and harsh response. Violence, meanwhile, surged on Wednesday between Israel and the Iran-backed Lebanese militant Hezbollah group, which fired a volley of rockets and drones on northern Israel. The attack wounded at least 14 Israeli soldiers, six seriously, the army said. The military said it struck Hezbollah targets deep inside Lebanon in response. Britannia and Germania. I spoke with the President of Britannia, Rishi Sunak, בקרוב אני גם משוחח עם מנהיגים נוספים. אני מודה לידידינו על תמיכתם בהגנת ישראל, ואני אומר את זה גם תמיכה במילים וגם תמיכה במעשים. יש להם גם כל מיני הצעות ועצות, אני מעריך את זה, אבל אני רוצה להבהיר שאת ההחלטות שלנו אנחנו נקבל בעצמנו, ומדינת ישראל תעשה כל מה שצריך כדי להגן על עצמה. הממשלה תאשר היום את תוכנית תקומה לשיקום יישובי עוטף עזה. אנחנו נשקיע סכום של גדול מאוד, של 19 מיליארד שקלים, כדי להזניק את יישובי עוטף עזה לדורות. אנחנו נשקיע בדיור, בתשתיות, בחינוך, בתעסוקה, ברפואה ועוד. מחבלי החמאס ביקשו לעקור אותנו, אנחנו נעקור אותם ונעמיק שורש. נבנה את ארץ ישראל, נשמור על המדינה שלנו. תודה רבה לכם. Following reports of Amethi's Congress State Co-Coordinator Vikas Agrahari joining the PJP in the presence of Union Minister and PJP candidate from Amethi Lok Sabha constituency, Smriti Rani Agrahari refuted the claims and said that he met the PJP leader over an issue in his area where there was a formal welcome, which usually happens when people meet. 
He said he came to know about the news after he came back after the meeting. On the saffron he was using, he said it was not a PJP gamcha, but a regular towel. मैं अपने क्षेत्र के मुद्दों को लेकर के उनसे मिलने गया था और औपचारिक स्वागत समारोह जो होता है लोग एक दूसरे का जाते हैं आते हैं स्वागत स्वीकार करते हैं और वही टाइप की चीजें थी लेकिन उसके बाद वहां पे मुझे मैंने बाद में खुद आया और मीडिया के सामने मैंने देखा कि मीडिया में हो रहा है कि मैंने भाजपा ज्वाइन कर ली भाजपा ज्वाइन कर ली जबकि सच्चाई ये है कि मैंने वहाँ कोई वक्तव्य नहीं दिया कोई मेरा वीडियो एक भी नहीं है जिससे ये प्रताड़ित हो ये मतलब पता चले की मैंने भाजपा ज्वाइन कर ली है ये सरासर गलत बातें थी और हमको खुद मीडिया के माध्यम से एनआई के माध्यम से पीटीआई के माध्यम से पता चला कि हमको भाजपा ज्वाइन करा दी गई तो इसके लिए मैं खंडन करने के लिए आपके साथ आया हूँ तो क्या ऐसी स्थिति थी जो किन विषयों पर आपकी कांग्रेस लीडर है आप क्योंकि वहाँ पे नहीं ऐसा असल में कुछ समय पहले मैंने मिलने का समय मांगा था सांसद जी से वो नहीं मिल पाया था तो मैंने सोचा की आज चलो खुद मिल लेते हैं और अपने बाजार के जिससे हमारे बाजार हमारी जो मार्केट है स्थानीय बाजार है वहाँ पे शौचालय की सुविधा बिल्कुल नहीं है और लोग दिक्कतों का सामना करना पड़ता है तो उसी सब बातों को लेकर के गए थे उनसे मिलने के लिए और वहां पर जब हम मिलने गए तो हमको जो औपचारिक एक संबंध होते हैं लोगों के उसको दिखा करके और हमको भाजपा ज्वाइन करा दिया गया तो क्या आपको जो व्यक्ति पटका पहुंचाया गया था नहीं औपचारिक संबंध पटका भाई अरे अरे भगवा कलर कोई किसी का वो थोड़ी ना भाजपा का गमछा थोड़ी ना था वो तो नॉर्मल था गमछा था आप ये पहन लेंगे तो क्या कांग्रेस ही हो जाएंगे नहीं हो जाएंगे ना या कुछ भी हो जाएगा तो ये एक औपचारिक कलर है ये औपचारिक रंग है तो यही चीजें थी और वहाँ पे भाजपा जैसा कुछ नहीं था लेकिन बाद में मीडिया के साथ के माध्यम से पता चला मैंने भाजपा ज्वाइन कर ली आप तो उनके घर पे गए थे वहाँ पे किसी तरह का दबाव भी नहीं था आपने पहना भी भैया मैं वही चीज कर रहा हूँ ना मेरे भाजपा का पटका थोड़ी ना पाए Mian Altaf Ahmad, the candidate of National Conference for the Antnak Rajori parliamentary constituency seat in Jammu and Kashmir, filed his nomination on Tuesday, Thursday. He submitted his nomination papers before returning officer Dr. Syed Fakhruddin Hamid at Antnak. Abni party candidate Zafar Iqbal Manas also filed his nomination papers today. Meanwhile, PDP candidate Mehbooba Mufti will be filing her nomination papers late in the afternoon today. After the filing of nomination, NC Vice President Omar Abdullah said Mian Altaf Ahmad will represent all parties of the India Alliance on Gulam Nabi Azad not contesting the Lok Sabha elections. Abdullah said he was not shocked and might have fielded another candidate from his party. India Gatbandan ke taraf se National Conference ke umidwar jo ke milke National Conference, Congress, CPM, Baki Jo, India, Gatbandan Ki Jo Partia Hai, Unke Taraf Se, Jina Mia Altaf Saab Ne Aaj, Apna Nomination Paper Jo Hai, Wo DC Saab Ko, DC Saab Ko Submit Kiye Hai, Or, Hum Umeed Kar Rai, Ke Inshallah, Is Election Me, تمام پارٹیوں کے تعاون سے میاں صاحب جو ہیں ایک اچھی کامیابی اس الیکشن میں حاصل کریں گے میں خاص کر تنظیم کے صدر جناب فاروق صاحب کے طرف سے میر صاحب کا شکر گزار ہوں جو خاص دلی سے اپنی باقی ذمہ داریاں چھوڑ کے یہاں آئے ہیں تاکہ جب میاں صاحب اپنے کاغذ سبمیٹ کریں تو ان کی بھی پریزنس یہاں پہ بہت ضروری تھی اور یہ آئے جس کے لئے ہم ان کا شکر گزار ہیں اس میں اس میں کونسی حیرانگی کی بات ہے نا ہمیں تو پہلے ہی معلوم تھا وہ میدان میں نہیں ہوں گے وہ جب ڈوڑا سے میدان میں نہیں تھے تو انتناک سے میدان میں کہاں اتریں گے اب انہوں نے شاید اپنا کوئی امیدوار جو ہے دکھانے کے لئے میدان میں اتارا ہوا ہے اچھی بات ہے کہاں تک ان کی پارٹی کو لوگوں کا سمرتن حاصل ہوگا वो आपको आने वाले दिनों में पता चल जाएगा कल आखिरी दिन है देखिए ना अभी चौबीस घंटे हैं क्या पता चौबीस घंटे में कोई जादू करके उनको कोई मिल जाए